What's up, YouTube? If you guys can tell by the comment of the... I'm gonna edit this part. <laughs> you guys can tell by the... <laughs> the title of the video! The title of the video! We are gonna show you guys the cheapest and most efficient way that we found to do coil unplug on these B series, H series, whatever you wanna put coil unplug for these Hondas. And you can even do it with a stock ECU. <laughs> So we're over here with Shane. We are in Ocala to head over to Burton Racing, which is the guy that's gonna be supplying us with the stuff to do it, as well as soldering into the ECU. I'm gonna show you guys along with the ride and uh, show you exactly how you can get this done for super cost efficient, or super, really cheap. <laughs> How's it going? What's up, bud? Pablo. Robert. Thanks for having us, dude. Nice to meet you. you, man. Yeah, I've been on Facebook for a long yeah. time. I was telling him on the way here. So what are you doing right now? Um, I'm just taking this ECU apart, uh -huh. and uh, we got our board and the header. We got to solder in, and we'll put the board in there. We'll mark where we need to cut, okay, and then we'll cut it out so we can put the uh, harness connector through when you go to install it. Gotcha. And we're gonna put a bracing screw in as well because it's just gonna be a ECU, like a little chip board in uh -huh. there. So. We want to brace it against the wall of the ECU. Kind of like the ECU 100, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it has those pins in there, so yeah. it sits. It's not wiggling around because you know vibration's the worst thing you can do for any type of computer part. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so this works with stock ECU RS 300. Yeah, it'll work oh. with anything. Uh, stock, completely stock ECU, Chrome, Neptune, S 300. I've actually done one on an S 100. Oh wow! Um, nice. Guy sent it in. And he was like, hey, I got Han data. And I was like, okay, you got Han data. And then I got it. And it was like a little dinky thing. I was like, the it's Han data, whatever, man. <laughs> like, you didn't lie to me. So. And if it works. Yep. It's awesome. So basically anything that's like a, based off of a stock ECU. Right. OBD-1 ECU. OBD-1 ECU. That's cool. Right now I'm just sucking the solder out of this joint. Nice. Then we'll put that header through, solder it up. So people can send in their ECUs and have you do all of this, right? Yep. Um, we actually, a lot of people opt for that option. Like, mm -hmm. um, we prefer uh, people will pull their S300 out so we're not, you know, held responsible. Right. But, um, you know, if you if you send everything in, um, we, should, we get it all done in about one day, mm -hmm. uh, depending on when we get it. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we ship it back two day priority Sweet. with tracking. Yeah. And we do we do, do international. We have a kit um, in Canada. We got a kit in the UK. And we got a kit that just went out to Hawaii last week. Awesome. And the benefits with this kit, you don't have to run like the extra box and all of that right. stuff. Right, everything mounts in the ECU. You plug your harness in and then you run it out to your coils and you plug it up to the correct dizzy wires and that's it. That's all there is to it. You don't got to mount a box like Han Data, and uh, it doesn't cost nine hundred dollars like AM. <laughs> yeah. So, actually, I got an email from a guy just last week, and he's like, "Man, my car started up half a crank. That's better than it ever has. Um, it uh, it feels, you know, it runs smoother in boost, especially when VTEC comes on, mm -hmm. because what this does, I mean." What the whole coil pack conversion does and is for is it, um, you distribute, I think it draws like 10 amps or something. Well, each coil pack draws about five amps. So you're doubling your power distribution to right. your spark plugs. So you can get a stronger spark. So a stronger spark, it's gonna blow out less frequently, especially at high RPMs. Mm -hmm. And you can gap the plug a little bit bigger. The mm -hmm. bigger you gap your plug without it blowing out, you're gonna make more power for sure. In this kit, you you know you can take your dead OEM distributor with a bad ICM, bad coil, and you can't find those parts that are you know worthwhile to replace them, and you can still use that distributor in the housing because all this kit needs is the YCP sensor mm -hmm. in the bottom of the distributor, which barely ever goes bad. Those are like that's net when your distributor dies, that's never your issue. Yeah. Right. So we got this all soldered up. We're good to go. All I do is I set this in here, line it up. 
All right, we're setting this up on the bridge port. We're gonna mill this slot. Yeah, I've got a lot of people asking about what I'm doing coil on plugs, so I'm sure they're gonna love seeing all this stuff. Yeah, you got a good video for it. Oh yeah. You got a good car for it. I use a 1 8 125 drill bit. Just mark that hole where that screw needs to go through. I eyeball it, like I said, there's a little wiggle room, so it's not very precise. I just deeper the hole a little bit. In case anybody needs to stick their hand in there, they don't get cut up. Mm -hmm. So that board slides right in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're focused. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. It slides right in. It's a good fit. You got plenty of room to get your harness in. There's a little latch on the mm -hmm. bottom and that'll line up with your harness. It only goes in one way. Okay. Now we're gonna put that screw through. We also supply all the components for uh, coil connectors. We supply these connectors, which typically if you buy one of these from another dealer, you're just gonna get a pigtail, and then you gotta solder your wires. I personally, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have these connectors with all the, the crimp pins and everything that you need for a one piece connection, mm -hmm. which I feel like if you're doing a motorsports component, I feel like that's definitely the way you should go. Right. Less things to go bad. Yeah, exactly. So what do you got going on right now? Okay, we're soldering two leads onto these pins. One's a 12 volt power lead and one is the CYP sensor lead, which is a cam position sensor, which is what this uses to uh, do its firing signal. And that's the signal that we're gonna be getting from the distributor, right? Correct, that's the sensor at the bottom of the distributor that tells you your cam position. Mm -hmm. So, that's uh, that's what we wanna use because it barely ever goes bad. Nice. And it basically makes the ICM, the igniter, not needed once it's connected to this chip. And like we mentioned earlier, you offer all the services to right. do everything to the ECU just in case somebody is worried about not doing it correctly. Yep. Um, I mean, we do pretty good soldering work. Um, I'd say we're better than 90% of the people that send their S300 kits in or the chip DCUs in. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually like this computer not having its stuff. If you send your ECU in and it has uh, little issues, I'll communicate that with you and we can fix that while it's, it's still in my hands. Mm -hmm. Or... If you need boost by gear or you need to convert it to VTEC, I stock hundreds of ECU components to actually do all that. It's good. So we just solder these on. And what I'll do is I'll kind of feed it through. I always uh, leave mine kind of a little bit longer. That way, in case anything happens on either side, mm -hmm. you have a little bit extra wire in case you need to whatever, reattach it or do whatever you need to. A lot of people, you know, they're hard on their ECUs and Stuff comes loose, stuff breaks off. Right. Me. <laughs> Mine just. And then this uh, this clip that they go in, you can actually, there's two holes. The bottom hole is where you put your wire and the top you can put like a little thumbtack. Mm -hmm. You put it in there and it will release the wire in case you have to reconnect it. Oh, perfect. Serviceable. You got your small pin over here, that's your sensor. And then you got your big pin, which is your 12 volt. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna connect them just in that order. You're gonna start on, if you're looking at it, from the top, you're gonna to start right here on your left side, and you're just gonna press that in. So, the top, top, and then this is the bottom, but it's gonna to go to the middle. But they'll be in the same order. The uh, They won't cross over or anything. And with the full DIY kit, you provide instructions and whatnot on you how to do it? You will be emailed a full PDF with colored pictures and written instructions. Mm -hmm. We've got everything connected. Perfect. You want to explain to us real quick for the video yeah. where exactly these pins are going to go on to? So here's your harness. Obviously you have four coil leads and you have these three wires here that are going to mount. We, we prefer you don't use the thermostat ground. Hmm. So we mount this to the distributor. The ground? Yes, we put it through one, one, of, the one of the three bolts. distributor bolts. We typically do the bottom left one on mm -hmm. most cars because it's kind of hidden. 
Then you got two spade leads. These are already cut for OBD2. So when you deep in your OBD2 um, chassis harness or your distributor harness and you plug these in, you got a small one and you got a big one. The big one's power. The small one is to send the RPM signal back into the cluster. Now, what year is your car? Uh, the chassis is a 97. The harness is an OBD2A. The okay. one that I have on it right now. So you will need to use this, but OBD2B cars, you don't need this. It'll pay the, add the signal, the RPM signal for the TAC comes out of the ECU. Okay. And then it goes to the TAC. So you don't need this. You can, I mean, I don't recommend cutting it off, but I know guys want real clean bays. I would just kind of fold that back and heat shrink it up or do something like that. That way you have it and who knows, you might swap shells, so you might need it, you might mm -hmm. sell it, who knows. So with OBD2A chassis, you need both of those. OBD2B, you'll need OBD1, one of those. OBD1, you need both. OBD2A, you need both. OBD2B, you can get rid of your RPM lead. Perfect. So you just got a big spade and a big ring. Nice. All right, so let's cut away to the insulation on the car itself. Skip forward a couple days. I was finally able to get the actual coils and the coil plate, as you can see over here. And uh, my buddy Shane, that was in the last clip, he works at O'Reilly, so I was able to get a good deal with him. I'm gonna start by removing all of my spark plug wires. You can just pull these off to the side since you won't need these anymore. You can take it off of the distributor as well. Now using the coil plate and the coils, we are going to install this on here, which is as simple as dropping this down, fastening it, fastening it with all the nuts you need right there, and plugging in the coils to the harness. Once you have your coil plate as well as the coils fastened down, and all the wiring plugged in on that end, we're going to run the wiring right under the distributor and loosen this mounting bolt for the distributor. Reason being, we are going to be using the ground off of that bolt right over here. Got my ground secure. Now I'm gonna unplug the distributor. Once that's off, we removed this blue shielding that's on the inner harness part. So the harness that goes with the car itself. Then after that's off, the corresponding two pins, the signal and the power that we mentioned earlier on the harness side are what we pull off for the OBD2. And I have some heat shrink right here that he provides in his kit. And we're just gonna correspondingly hook up the appropriate wires. So the thick one on the coil on plug harness goes to the black and yellow, which is the power. And the thin one, which is also on his harness, goes to the blue wire, which is gonna be the distributor signal. After you plug that in, just slip this over and heat shrink it on and you can connect your distributor back. Now we've got both of the wires heat shrunk in. The next thing to do would be run the harness into the car itself. And what I really like about this kit, among other things, is that the harness is nice and long. So you can run it exactly how you like it. You can put it through one side of the firewall, the other side of the firing firewall, and you'll always have a good amount of uh, slack and you won't be really tight on anything. Uh, if you guys see my other videos, you know that we run our things through the center of the firewall where the AC components normally go, but since we don't have AC, obviously, we don't have to worry about that. We have everything in, in through there. Uh, and I'm just gonna pull that through the other side of the firewall. Just pulls right through the firewall, no problem. And if you can see, we still have the ECU mounted on the stock location because this has more than enough room to clear the floorboard. So you don't have to worry about having your ECU mounted horizontally or anything. So this is as simple as plugging it right in. And there's only one way it goes since there is a little clip that retains it. Now that you've got it plugged in and secured, you can give it a little tug, not too hard because it is ECU, but you want to make sure that your clip is intact. And we are going to just start the car over. And if it has a little trouble starting up, that's just because, you know, E85 and has it ran today. Oh, I actually started right up first time. It almost never does that. But uh, everything's working as it should. The board on the ECU is showing that it's properly functioning, as well as my Honda. I'm gonna pull up Honda at the moment and make sure that everything is perfect, as I'm sure it is. Everything's running perfectly on Honda. No check engine lights, no problems accelerating. As 
as you can tell, very quick acceleration, no problem with throttle response at all. My AFRs are exactly where they were before I installed this. Make sure to check him out, Burton Racing. I'll link down his Facebook information as well and all of his company company information down below. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get back as soon as possible. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as notification. Hit a like button for us because we really appreciate it. And I just want to say a big thank you for my original 10,000 subscribers. We just hit 10,000 today and I am more than happy to say that we are going to continue growing and giving our best content the best possible that we can give to you guys and showing our process of the build along the way. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon.